Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here, and today I want to talk about Puck. I know Puck is a hero that hasn't been popular for a while, but I think that is going to change. I played this hero personally myself, I've been watching pros play it as well. There's a lot of builds going on right now, and so this video is going to give you guys some cool direction with one of the best mid heroes of this patch. I genuinely believe that. So yeah, if you're excited for me to talk about Puck and show you guys how to stomp your pubs, smash the like button and subscribe, and let's get into it. And of course, get your $50 off lifetime sub right now. It's obviously a limited time offer, there's not much time left, so click the link down below, and I'll see you there. By the way, he goes a very cool item build this game, it involves the new item Witchblade, which is something, you know... It's one of those items that is so cool because it slows, it poisons, it gives attack speed, it gives projectile speed. It's a very bizarre item. But we're going to watch MSS here uh, stomp on the puck. He goes absolutely insane. And I want to show you how his build and playstyle enables that. All right, let's get into it. So first things first, let's talk about the actual puck buffs. He got a lot of buffs. He got his level 10 talent buffed to 30 damage from 25. His orb was buffed and damaged by quite a lot. The range on your waning rift was buffed. Your dream coil was changed a little bit in your favor. So Puck's agility gain was increased as well, which is great as Puck is a right-clicking intelligence hero. His turn rate was improved, which is cool, you know, it allows you to use your orb and your W much more effectively. And so all in all, this hero got buffed and buffed and buffed, right? It just got a bunch of buffs. Also, I feel like Puck was in an okay spot before this. It definitely wasn't some great hero, uh, but Topson's been showing us that, hey, even with E-Blade, uh, you know, it has some potential. So all in all, what I want to talk about in this video is how he pops off with Witchblade. But let's get into the laning stage, start off with that. So the main thing you want to do is Puck. It's very similar to any hero with a nuke. It's actually the exact same. You want to hit your opponent a lot. Puck is very, very good stats, okay? His hero stats are quite impressive. Uh, the only thing that he can lack a bit on is the armor category, but what I will say is that his damage is very high. His attack range is also solid as well at 550, and he has a great animation as well as a nuke. So what does that all mean? When you have a good animation, decent attack range, good damage, and a nuke, well, what it means is you can push the lane. And so you're going to see in this lane, really I, w I want you guys to pay attention to, is how much he auto attacks. How much does he auto attack? It's a lot. He's going to auto attack a lot. And it's not random. It's not because he has auto attack on. That's not the reason. It's because he wants to constantly shove the wave into the visage so that he has more creeps than visage. And because of that, he can hit the visage. And that's what, how you want to play Puck in 99% of matchups, right? Even pulling aggro here, he's going to walk up, pressure a range creep, right? Look to, look to secure the range creep. Visage draws aggro, so visage obviously knows what he's doing. Or secure the range creep and chill, right? Visage is obviously a good player as well. Keep in mind, guys, that Visage is a rank 96 player. This lobby in general is all, almost all, actually all, almost all, dang it, SK, almost all above rank 100. So, if, you know, this strategy is going to work, right? It's going to work. But yeah, the main strategy he's using here is he pulls aggro, he draws aggro onto the range creep, and this is very potent against Visage because Visage doesn't have the ability to secure, right? He doesn't have a nuke for the range creep. You could say, oh, but he has this W. Well, usually you don't even take it because you're not going to build up charges mid. It, it's not reliable, especially not against a puck. You know, you definitely don't want that. And so Visage doesn't have a range creep secure. And so what you can do is puck is as follows, right? You contest every single creep. And then you, you, you can see even here, the Visage tries to use the Q to secure it. But the puck understands, okay, no nuke gets the deny. Very nice. And then orbs ahead. Uh, this was a bit of a psycho orb, to be honest. That was a bit aggressive. But nonetheless, right? It's pull aggro, auto attack. Orb for CS, hopefully the range creep, and continue to bait your opponent in and auto attack them, right? You can see this pattern, he literally just does it over and over and over again, doesn't overextend, and that's what makes you win the lane. Like, funny enough, I've come to the realization that the laning stage is not easy. You still have to land all your spells, you have to be really good at last hitting, really good at denying, really good at pulling creep aggro, right? When you pull aggro, you have to walk in a circle. I'll show you this real quick. So, when he pulls aggro, which you'll likely do in a moment here, he pulls aggro, you don't walk like all the way back. Usually people, they go all the way back. You want to turn around, right? So in this case, he doesn't go in a circle. Usually I recommend you go like this, a little bit of a loop, right? Let's see you pull aggro here, loop. Most people just go straight back and it's not even that beneficial or they don't go back for the enough. So uh, consider the loop strategy. So he ends up putting a lot of pressure here. You're going to see Max is at his W. This is something that, I, I mean, it's definitely good. The value in maxing your Ws is largely because of the silence it provides. 
you know, having almost a four second silence, 3.5 seconds, very valuable for killing people, right? It's, it's incredibly good. Also, when you max out the Waning Rift first, it kind of puts the cooldowns of Waning Rift and Illusory Orb close to the same, which is very nice. It allows you to combo them together consistently, so I think that's good in general. But you can see he spends a lot of time mid, so I know I didn't show you guys everything in the laning stage, but what I do want to say is that he is yet to gank. He hasn't made a single gank. And it's funny, it's like... But he's Puck. Like, why isn't he ganking? He's Puck. He's a hero with high magical damage, bunch of nukes, you know, and Dream Coil. Why not go gank? He can't kill Visage. Well, it's hard for him to kill Visage because Visage has Gravekeeper's Cloak, which blocks his magical damage nukes. And so, um, you know, all in all, what he's doing here is he's just putting mid pressure and getting his farm up. Then he looks for his first gank of the game. Now, why does he think this is a good gank? Let's talk about this. Okay. Why does he see this as, as an opportunity? Well, he sees it as an opportunity for a couple of reasons, right? Let's check it out. Number one, Visage probably doesn't have vision of him. Unless Visage has a mid ward, right? Unless Visage has a mid ward, they probably don't have vision of him. Um, I think he believes that there's no mid ward, which it seems like there is not, right? So there's no mid ward, so Visage doesn't see the TP. And it looks like they're going for a tri-lane gank here, right? It looked like they were going to dive the Enchantress. And Puck, his favorite thing is countering dives. Actually, that's most mid laners favorite thing. It's frankly the best rotation you can make in Dota as it's pretty reliable. But unfortunately, this is a high mower game. They realize quickly they can't kill the Ench. They also might have, you know, had a feeling that the puck was going to TP in. It's, it's actually, you know, a real thing. Um, and, you know, they run away. But because he's playing puck, he's still able to chase. And really, the damage you do is insane. Also, fortunate enough for him, he has an arcane rune, so... He's able to pick up a quick little double kill. It's a great rotation. And, you know, that's the power of the puck. The mobility that this hero has is through the roof. Oh, finds another onto the Marana. Cuts the wave. More efficiency. Back to the mid lane. Gets a regen rune. And is going to continue farming. And this is exactly what you want to do with puck to continue snowballing. You never want to commit to just ganking, ganking, ganking. Please do exactly what MSS does here. After you get your gank, immediately go back to mid. Are there situations where this isn't optimal? Yes, but it's like one out of 50 situations. Every time, guys, use this as a rule of thumb. Every time you finish a gank, I need you guys to do two things in order to maximize efficiency. Number one, buy a clarity. In this case, he already had the clarity, but buy a clarity. After you gank, you're going to be low on mana. I, I don't see how that wouldn't be the case. And the second one is go back to mid. You're going to have much better games if you do that, right? Focus on your game a lot more. Mid laners and especially ganking mid laners need to be a lot more selfish. They need to be a lot, a lot more selfish. So for his build here, he ends up going Veil into the Witchblade. So the cool thing about the Witchblade is it's obviously an item for intelligence right clickers. It gives you intelligence and attack speed and it does damage. It poisons them and does damage based upon your int, right? So um, what's really cool about this is Puck is a int hero, right? So he has a lot of int, currently has 62. And Witchblade, which you'll be picking up next, does one times your int as damage every second. And it lasts for three seconds, which means every nine seconds, which is the passive cooldown, every nine seconds, you deal 150 extra magical damage. And keep in mind, that's buffed up by Veil. So it's actually, what, 190, something like that? It's more than that. It's like 200, right? It's like 210 damage, which is a ton, right? It's a ton, it's somewhere around there. Combine that with your nukes, and you can kill almost anyone. And I, I really think that's why a lot of people will be favoring this build. You can even go E-Blade as well. You can go Veil into E-Blade. I like that build as well. Uh, but all in all, I'm a huge fan of the Veil. I'm also a huge fan of Urn. These are items that I think everyone can just consider. Urn is good as well because it's kind of like Veil provides you extra that little bit of extra damage that Puck needs to finish off kills. Puck is just, it's just one of those heroes that always just ends up being a little bit short on kills. But now that he's gotten some extra agility, extra nuke damage, and... You can buy this Witchblade, uh, you, you can actually get a lot of kills. Now right here, we're gonna get to see it all come together. By the way, you pop the Clarity at full mana. I just wanna say guys, I'd love you if you pop Clarity at full mana, even though it's like, <laughs> speed, that makes no sense. Guys, I don't, guys, you don't understand. This is something, if you ever get to a high level of Dota, you will find yourself in real life popping Clarities because you have to pop Clarities to get to high MMR. It's a simple, if you aren't popping clarities, I don't care what role you are, even if it's full mana, just to clear a slot in anticipation of, of casting a spell, just cast, just use clarities. I, I love this because it's, it's actually a bad play, but it just shows the mentality, <laughs> which, which I just love. But okay, let's get into the clip here. So, uh, woof, voice crack, but he's going to pop his veil, go in with the W, then leave with the Q. Unfortunately, they don't have vision right away here. 
but the Witchblade damage. It also can be used on creeps, so be a little bit careful about that, right? It is good for farming in that regard, but uh, yeah, make sure you don't waste it on creeps. In this case, another thing Puck is really good at is pressuring side lane carries. Troll can be a bit awkward as if you get unlucky or you play it wrong, Troll can actually solo kill you uh, if he roots you enough. But um, all in all, this hero is really good at kicking out carries. So once again, it's a high mark game, so Troll read the gank coming. Usually the enemy carry will not run away that fast. Don't worry about it. But yeah, you want to pressure heroes in the side lane. And the reason for this is it's the best thing you can do as Puck. I really mean that, especially for solo queue. Now, why is this? Well, you're shutting down the carry, which is typically the hero that, uh, believe it or not, carries the game. And most importantly, you're going to get farmed yourself. And Puck scales extremely well. Like, I don't think people realize how well this hero actually scales. All right, this fight is a great demonstration of the power of Puck, especially in the early game, especially against heroes that are high armor heroes, because you don't really care that they're high armor heroes. So let's look at the troll. He's going to lead the fight in here. Uh, goes for the coil. Technically, you're supposed to veil first if you can. Keep in mind that coil does do quite a bit of initial damage. In fact, at level 6, you have 125 just straight up initial damage. Um, so there's that. Um, so basically, you do want to veil first if you can. But typically with coil, you can't. You don't want to focus that. Nonetheless, let's focus on what's important, which is the other execution of the fight. So he leads in here. You're going to see he goes for an auto attack. Obviously, this is very, very uh, important to do when you buy the Witchblade. Goes for the auto attack onto the troll, lands it, and you're going to see Troll's HP is just going to start to drop off a little bit, right? The poison starts kicking in, and it's not anything insane, but unfortunately, <laughs> the troll Zulti actually makes him snap on the coil, and they're able to clean up the kill, so beautifully done. And on top of that, you can see the Witchblade cooldown is very, very short. Coming in at 9 seconds, it allows you to continue to chase here, and it slows. You know, that's a big thing. I, I really don't think it, it was clear to me how good this item is, or potentially good this item is, because it slows, right? And for Puck, you actually lack the ability to solo kill people when you don't have Coil. It's quite annoying. Uh, but when you have this Witchblade, the slow actually allows you to stay on top of people very easily, especially if they're a support. You can just kill supports within the 3 second slow uh, that you actually get. Alright, and honestly, guys, like... 80% of this game is just him shoving waves, but let's look at another fight. Huge Coil. This was a great start to the fight. Unfortunately, he missed a Marana, but it's always important when you're playing Puck, when you go in, this is the optimal way to go in. Pre-Blink, okay? This is pre-Blink. So when you go in pre-Blink, you need to make sure you don't kill yourself, okay? Puck wants to go in and out, in and out, in and out. It's like the burger place from California. Most of you probably have no clue what I'm talking about, so I'm just going to move on to the Dota stuff. But nonetheless, he goes in. Leads with the Veil in this case, obviously, as I said, that's optimal. Then he's going to actually W behind them, right? He's going to Waning Rift behind them. Why is that important? Because it allows you to throw your orb away from the enemy team. If you coil orb, then W, you get stuck. And I see a lot of puck players do this, right? They coil orb W, and then their orbs here. It's like, hmm, all right, well, I can't go to that. But you can see here, he uses the Waning Rift to position the orb properly. And he's actually able to... Uh, solo kill the troll with the poison i mean my gosh that is so much damage uh all combined together you know and and you kind of just continue to poke and prod from the outlines from the outside of the fight and i i think that's why i love this item so much too on puck the nine second cooldown matches really well with the 13 and 10 second cooldown of orb and waning rift and briefly i'd like to discuss the talents he actually ends up taking and talk about why i think his talents are a good choice. So it goes for the 150 cast range. And this might seem weird. It's like, hmm, but you have this Witchblade and, you know, you do quite a bit of right click damage. Well, the, I think his reasoning behind this is the cast range really allows you to use your Waiting Rift and your Coil very effectively. For Orb, it doesn't do too much. It does do a little, but it doesn't do too much. It's mostly for the Waiting Rift and the Coil. It allows you to cast these spells very far and kite around the edges of the fight very effectively. Uh, it's just good for that. So yeah, that's the route he goes. However, there are other builds, and I might cover this in a Game Leap website video where they involve the 30 damage and phase shift attack. And I think that's why Puck's so good right now. Let's say your team needs you to carry the game for whatever reason. You have like, I don't know, a Slark having some god awful game. And, or you know this guy's gonna feed. He's just horrible, right? You, you have this guy pre-muted, like you're like convinced he's not gonna do anything. You can go 30 damage, phase shift attack, you know, and then go that route. You can at level 25, you take the Dream Coil Rapid Fire, you build a Deso, you build like E-Blade, Deso, Treads, a bunch of right click, right? And you play the, the game that way. But with this game, you know, he has a bunch of carry heroes. His off laner is essentially a carry. It's an edge. Right? So he was a carry off laner. He's a carry carry. He's a Wraith King who's mega farm. Well, it's actually one in three. He's not mega farm, but he's very farm. Look at the net worth. And so all in all, he doesn't have to solo carry this game. That, that doesn't have to be his job. And so he can go for this magical damage build that's going to do much better in the mid game, right? 
Veil Witchblade is very good mid-game. I wouldn't say this build necessarily scales incredibly well late, but you'll see with the level 20 talent that it does scale well, at the least. And what that level 20 talent is, is 7 seconds waning rift cooldown. In my opinion, this is one of the best talents in the game. I think it's really, really cool and interesting how it changes the game. The reason why I say that is it makes waning rift a 6 second cooldown. That's super low. A silence that's 3.5 seconds on a 6 second cooldown essentially enables you to silence people more than 50% of the fight. And that's pretty dang good. Well, I don't know if I forgot to mention, guys, but uh, shove waves. I don't. I know I don't say this very often, but you got shove waves. Remember, shove waves. It's very important. And last but not least, as we watch one of the last fights of the game, this ends up being a 28 minute match. You don't need to blink on Puck. With this cast range talent, you can cast your Dream Coil from very far away. And essentially, you can buy a lot more stat items. You can see here, he goes for a Lincoln Sphere. Very cool Lincoln Sphere. It's going to protect his team from the Sand King, right? His only real threat this game is the Sand King. I think he feels like with the poison from the, the Witchblade, as well as this low waning rift cooldown here, he does plenty damage, plenty utility. And so he goes for Lincoln's, takes a safe route, just wants to continue to kite from the outside of the fight and silence everyone. Uh, and yeah, you, you can see that coming to play. The silence is constantly up. He goes on the Marana here, silences her. It's a, obviously a great silence target. Gets chased across the map by the troll. <laughs> he gets kited out completely. Oh, yeah, you know the enemy team is done. But yep, yeah, I think that's the potential of Puck right now. This hero is incredibly strong in my opinion. I wouldn't be surprised if it... Uh, you know, considered to be one of the most broken heroes. Now, obviously, I could be wrong about these type of things, guys. Th these videos are, you know, early on into the patch. They're theory, of course, you know. It's not like, oh my god, the patch has been out for three days and Puck is absolutely busted. Well, that can happen. And, you know, Hoodwinked was, shoo, you know, that hero's, woo. <laughs> you still have to be careful. But, all right, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And we've been waiting a lifetime for this patch. Speaking of lifetime, Game Leap is currently doing a $50 off sale on their lifetime sub. So if you're looking for thousands of videos and new daily content every day, you can get a lifetime sub for $50 off right now. This is a special we're doing for the new patch to celebrate. So click the link down below, sign up now, you won't regret it. It's quite a large discount, so I really recommend that you guys take advantage of it, and I'll see you there.